is a geopolitical question, but it really is an economic risk question, given we've put the CHIPS Act in place and other things. The president yesterday uh, on 60 Minutes said quite, I, I think, directly to the American public that uh, if uh, China were to invade Taiwan, that uh, U.S. would send troops. Right after that, uh, almost as usual, because we've now had this situation happen several times, the White House puts out a statement saying that's not exactly what he meant, uh, that there's this idea of strategic ambiguity. Uh, what is the American public supposed to think about that? What is the global world supposed to think about that in terms of how they assess, let's just keep it to economics, the economic risk of something happening? Well, I think the American people understand now the economic risks of global supply chains um, and the challenges facing our country. Um, let's point back to what we already know has happened. Um, an unprovoked war in the Ukraine has upended global oil prices, but that has meant um, challenges for people here in the United States. And the pandemic, which meant that when you know countries overseas had to shut down a factory because people were sick and, and American factories couldn't get the parts they needed, that meant Americans couldn't go to the store or, and buy the thing that they wanted. It meant that maybe they couldn't get a new car when they wanted it. Um, we understand the fragility of these supply chains, right. and that's why that has been the primary focus. And therefore, we're sending focus. in troops, or we're not, in, if there if there is I'm an not invasion. Speak to the, I'm not going to speak to the geopolitical issues. Let's keep to the economics here this morning. But, but that what is we know, the, but, 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 but the, the geopolitical the issue creates the economic risk issue. And and we know that there's always risk. It's why this administration, for the past year and a half, the economic agenda has been focused on addressing those risks and making sure that we're mitigating for the American people. The Chips and Science Act is about that. It's about saying we understand there's still going to be global supply chains, but we need to make sure that we have that capacity here in the United States so that when things get tough, when geopolitical challenges happen, Americans are not left in the lurch. It's about making sure that we are focused on an economy that can deliver for the American people. And that has been the focus of the bipartisan infrastructure law, making sure we have that infrastructure, making sure we have access to the technologies we need through the Chips and Science Act, and making sure that we are addressing our need for clean energy which is, as we know, energy powers everything, and making sure that we are putting America on that path, giving industry just that little bit of help it needs so that those markets can function the, well the, for people. That has been our focus. That's how you uh, deal with the, risk. The stock market obviously has all these things wrong. There, there's, a, a, that's a pretty picture that you've painted, but it seems like you know, mortgage rates have doubled in the last year. Gas prices are still up probably 60 or 70 percent from they were before the president took office. Inflation's running at 8.3 percent. Um, 40 year highs. I, I, it just. Gas prices have come down phenomenally, Joe. I mean, you cannot I, I deny that. Still, that is a, they were $2 a, a decrease of over over and change when he cents. came into. They were two and change when he came into office. And, 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 I, and I, I we've I had a global. Geo, we've had a geopolitical crisis. Right. That has upended we did. oil markets, which is why the president is so focused on moving well, us all towards electric point. vehicles. If, if you're going to so blame the pan, If you're going to blame everything on the pandemic for inflation, then you've got to acknowledge that reopening after the pandemic is why we just got back to basically the job that we had before the pandemic. The 10 million just got us but back we are to on even. A, but we are putting ourselves on a better path now. When you look over the kinds of things that we've done, we have been focused on all of the different kinds of risks that you just mentioned. And recovering from a pandemic is hard. What we've seen um, you know, for businesses is that you know, even a short shutdown can upend their processes, their ability to produce, and you're behind. And so what we want to do is put in place the kind of economy, make sure that we are facilitating the kind of economy where these kinds, where it, that has more resilience. So when these challenges happen, you have a little bit more breathing room, a little bit more room so that you don't have to shut everything down, so that you don't have these kinds of crises in the future. But certainly, you know, it is true that inflation is higher now than it was before, but it is also true that we've seen some signs of abatement in the past couple of months and that we're doing everything we can to get that back down. And again, that is why the Fed will be doing its job.